So tomorrow we'll be getting the CPI report for March. And, uh, you know, clearly markets were a little nervous and skittish today. We saw a lot of strange price action going on. Uh, some hedging activity, it looked like, based off of some of the shorter dated implied volatility levels. Uh, we had some nervousness, clearly, in bond yields. We saw bond yields kind of retrace to some of their breakout levels, some weakness in the dollar. Uh, so markets are really sort of on edge with this number. And, you know, I went over in a lot of detail over the weekend in like a 20-minute video going over what these numbers mean, even if they come in as expected. It's still sort of suggesting an acceleration in the rate of change uh, for uh, the month-over-month -month core CPI. Uh, and so that's what really sort of makes these a little bit worrisome, at least because if they were to come in hotter, that would certainly be uh, something that I think would really sort of throw a lot of people for a loop because expectations obviously have been that we are in a disinflation process. And while we have been in a disinflation process, the evidence of the last two months and some of the other price metrics we're seeing is that this that this inflation process has stalled some. Now, we're looking still for the same number, 0.3% on a month-over-month -month basis on CPI headline and core. Uh, those are both going to be down from 0.4% last month. CPI year-over-year, -year, we're looking for 3.4, up from 3.2. Uh, X food and energy, we're looking for 3.7 versus last month's 3.8. Today, uh, for my subscribers at least, I went over some additional information that I got over the last couple of days. Uh, that would suggest there's a potential here for this number actually to come in a little bit hotter tomorrow. One of those data points came this morning, which was a small business optimism index, uh, which came in at 88.5, which isn't really the important point. The important detail is this uh, NFIB small businesses seeing higher prices. You can see had a pretty meaningful uptick in the month of March. In fact, when we see this was February, and then March, we went from around the 21 to a 28, which is a pretty big percentage change. Uh, and then, of course, when we look also at the NFIB, small businesses, inflation, single most important problem, uh, very big jump from January, February, and March, going from uh, roughly 23 to 25, but overall from a reading of about 20 to 25 in two months. And so this is an important little development here that, I didn't really see coming. The ISM prices paid index didn't really go over that detail very well. ISM services actually kind of suggested that service inflation uh, slowed in the month of March. But this data from these small businesses suggests that the pace of inflation is actually picking up and becoming a little bit more problematic. Why do we care about these numbers? Well, because the CPI on a year-over-year -year basis seems to track uh, this higher prices index pretty closely. Uh, and while the core CPI mimics it a little bit more loosely, um, we can certainly see that there is uh, relationships between all of these metrics. And at least if we were to take the uh, NFIB numbers and extrapolate them, they would suggest that the CPI numbers uh, turn higher. Uh, that doesn't mean that they do tomorrow, but that's what that data point sort of suggests. It, Again, you can see there's a little bit of a lead and a lag here, right? But overall, what this is sort of implying to us is that we are seeing these numbers sort of turn higher. And, and at least when we look at the CPI swap curve, um, what we're seeing, uh, again, inflation is expected to remain somewhere around this 3.3% area. Uh, well, I guess out to July. This is March, April, May, June, July. So those numbers that we got from this NFIB today could be suggesting that uh, these numbers are going to continue to move up a little bit. So that's sort of uh, some of the interesting aspects in, term of the, in terms of the inflation data that we're expected to get. Um, but in overall, in terms of the market today, you could just see a lot of volatility. We had opened uh, higher on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the NASDAQ. We got up to around here, and then we got this big, sharp sell-off, which, which had the makings of what looked to be someone probably putting some hedges on in place of for, for tomorrow, because the VIX 1D, uh, at least as of the opening, was uh, somewhere down in this uh, 8 area, which is just simply too low uh, for that type of reading going into uh, a CPI print. Typically, we see these numbers associated with numbers that are more around this 14 area. The last reading was up here. Uh, in March at around 18 and a half. And so this one came in today, it closed at 18. 
but you can see it was trading much lower intraday. And so this sort of, I think, had something to do with some of the early trading we were seeing in the NASDAQ and in the S&P 500, at least to start the day. Uh, it certainly makes sense when you look at the movement of the price action in the charts with this big move up in uh, implied volatility and this big move down in the price in, in the value of stocks. And then, of course, later in the day, we had a more minor move down in the value of the VIX 1D, but a bigger move up in the NASDAQ, which really didn't uh, compute from a standpoint of the sizes of the two moves. Uh, and, and there could have been a, a valid reason for that. Uh, perhaps people were selling longer dated uh, implied volatility uh, with the VIX. Uh, maybe they were looking to uh, get rid of 30-day type volatility and instead were using the shorter dated volatility because you certainly saw a very big move lower in the VIX going into the end of the day. So there looks to me like there was just a lot of different hedging activity going on in the uh, NASDAQ today than there was more of anything else. Uh, the one thing I guess that I will point out and that I mentioned in my blog write-up, uh, which you can get on my website or on Substack or on Seeking Alpha, I put it out every day, um, continues to center around this uh, idea that we had these two bearish engulfing patterns making creating what could be a double top. Notice that this level of support at 850, uh, we got below it today. Uh, and we're able to close back above it into the close. So I think this is a very uh, important region for NVIDIA. Uh, clearly, if this were to break uh, and actually move down, it would confirm problem. It would likely confirm a double top in the NVIDIA and suggest further downside, potentially down to this region and potentially filling this gap. Uh, so that's something to keep an eye on because we know that the market has. Uh, really latched on to NVIDIA and where NVIDIA goes, pretty much the equity market goes. Uh, when we look at the S&P 500 today, uh, certainly, uh, again, similar price action, really nothing uh, too dramatic that stands out. We've just been sort of consolidating again sideways now, I guess really since March 20th, it looks like. Um, that was sort of when we had this big rally. Uh, it didn't really amount to much of anything. This was around, I think, the FOMC meeting if memory serves me correct. Uh, and you can see basically since then, we've just been trading sideways at this point. Uh, again, last week we were sort of suspicious about this drop saying it looked like it was mostly due to hedging activity going into the job report. Sure enough, the next day we bounced back somewhat, although we haven't been able to really get much beyond this area and here at 5220. Um, again, the call wall is around here at 5,200. So that's one reason why you're also seeing a little bit of resistance here. So tomorrow it looks like, you know, with the VIX 1D being elevated, we would expect to see this uh, really kind of drop tomorrow uh, and give back a lot of these gains. This is typically what happens. Uh, again, we saw this happen uh, with the job report. I would expect to see something similar tomorrow with perhaps the VIX 1D going lower. Uh, and implied volatility likely moving lower overall again, and that's largely going to depend on the data because if you get data that surprises to the upside, like some of those uh, like those two NFIB data points I showed you, then um, that could be enough to keep implied volatility bid, especially out when you get to the 30 days type uh, implied vol, uh, and so that could sort of create this environment where we get some sort of a data release. Uh, we get some sort of initial, let's say, knee-jerk reaction this way, and then you get some sort of move up uh, once we get the market kind of opening uh, or going into the open as implied volatility melts. So that sort of creates a little bit of a complexity around that because obviously the spin will be the market's digesting the CPI data good no matter what it is, right, because you're getting this volatility crush that just always happens when you get past the data point. Uh, and so we'll have to really sort of evaluate where the equity market is after we get through the CPI report, probably later in the day, Wednesday, or maybe even on Thursday. Uh, at least for rates, again, we're kind of just watching this 435 level. You can see we retrace back to it. Tomorrow we are getting a 10-year auction, so we'll be watching that data point very closely. Uh, and then we'll be getting a 30-year auction on Thursday. We're also going to be getting PPI also on um, Thursday as well. Uh, and certainly when we look at things like oil, 
which have uh, continued to move up. Oil came back to support right here around 85 and a half. It is a little got it did get a little bit overbought, so not surprised to see it pulling back a little bit. Copper prices also appear to have broken out, although I would again wouldn't be surprised to see a stall out given that we're seeing um, the RSI get uh, up to this upper level, <laughs> to this level up in here. So again, I would keep an eye on on copper. These things are going to potentially add to uh, come on, to inflation worries. And I would watch the housing HGX index because obviously higher copper prices go into building materials and other things of that nature. And if you begin to see copper going up, then that could eventually begin to erode, eat into margins, and that may be not so good for the housing sector. So the housing sector may be a very important uh, group to be paying attention to at this point. Um, anyway, so I think that's all we're going to cover for today. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.